morning children happy sunday you are welcome to our sunday school this morning hope you had a lovely week before we start let us pray oh lord our heavenly father almighty and everlasting god we thank you for bringing us to sunday school this morning we thank you for our teacher we thank you for our parents jesus come and teach us yourself plant all these words in our hearts and help us to be good and obedient children in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson today is Lesson 14b. And the title is The Right Answer. Our memory verse is, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verse 14. Our text is found in the book of Joshua chapter 10 verses 12 to 14, and another one is Luke 18, 35 to 38, and 40 to 42. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Then spake Joshua to the, to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, Stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. 13. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and he said not to go down about a whole day, 14. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside, begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. 38. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. Let's close our Bible and put it aside. Children, can you see this clock? Can you see the red hand going round and round? Now I'm going to stop this clock. Does the time stop or go backward? No. But today, I'm going to talk about a time when that did happen in answer to prayer. Remember last week, we learned about three ways God answers prayer. He can answer with a yes, a no, or wait. Today, we are going to learn how God answered Joshua and the blind man's prayers with a yes. A nation who didn't love God were fighting against the children of Israel. And Joshua, who was the captain of the children of Israel, of the army of the children of Israel, went to God in prayer. Joshua believed in God. He asked God that he should make the sun to stand still. And that was exactly what God did. God 
made the sun to stand still and the moon stood still until the children of Israel were able to win the battle. Andy, Beth's brother in a story lesson, told Beth about this story from the Bible about how Joshua, a man, could pray to God and God answered his prayer. This Bible story was a proof to Beth that God will answer our prayer too. Andy told Beth not to be afraid to ask God for anything. He said, if what we are asking for is good, God will answer with a yes. Beth believed his uh, brother and she knelt by her bed and prayed that God will make Auntie Sue, who is preparing for a wedding, to ask her to do something at our wedding. She said she remembered what her brother said that if what we are praying for is good, God will answer. And few days later, Auntie Sue phoned Beth and asked her to be a flower girl. Beth was very, very happy and excited to do something even more special at her auntie's wedding. Another example is the story of the blind man from the Bible. This blind man stood by the wayside begging for money. He heard a crowd of people and he asked what it was. People told him that it was Jesus of Nazareth that was passing by. Because this man had heard about Jesus, he shouted, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. People were telling him to be quiet, not to disturb Jesus. But this man shouted the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and he asked them to bring the man nearer to him. And he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The man told Jesus that I may receive my sight. And Jesus told him that his faith had saved him and the man was able to see again. Jesus answered the blind man's prayer with a yes. Same way, when we pray, when we ask our mommy or daddies when we are coming back from school, mommy, daddy, take me to the park or buy this for me, make cookie for me. Our mommies always answer us with a yes because what we are asking for is good for us. Same way, if we pray to God about anything that is His will, God will do it. Especially if we are praying for Jesus to save our soul. Because it is the will of God, He will answer us with a yes. This is the end of our lesson. Our statement is, God will do it. Our activities for ages 2 to 5 is finish the picture. Finish drawing the picture of Joshua when the sun and moon stood still. There are five places that are unfinished. Ages 6 to 8, God will do it. Find and circle the words hidden in the puzzle below. Our next week lesson is Lesson 14c, God Said No. The memory verse is, My grace is sufficient for thee. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Bye. See you next week.
Good morning, boys and girls. You are all welcome to answer class. Hope you had a lovely week. God bless you. Today, we are on chapter 6 of our series titled The Marriage Supper. Our memory verse is Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Have any one of you been invited to a wedding before? Oh, I've been invited. See my beautiful invitation card sent to me by the couple. I was invited a few months ago and I attended the wedding. Oh, it was very lovely. And everybody that came enjoyed themselves. There were a lot of goodies. This will now lead us into our lesson of today, the marriage supper. Our text is taken from Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 to 9, St. Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14, St. Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 38. But we are just going to read some selected verses from Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, St. Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 3, 5 and 6, 11, 12, and 14. I want you to open your Bible wherever you are and read along with me. I'm reading from Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. St. So Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 3. 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. 5. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. 6. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's close our Bible and listen to the lesson. Remember that last week we studied about the rapture. Those that will be raptured together with the dead in Christ will be the guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. In our text, Jesus made a parable and told us that the kingdom of heaven is like a king that made a marriage feast for his son. The king sent his servants to go and call those that were invited to the marriage to come because he had made everything ready for them. But do you know, those people will not come. They were given different excuses. The king sent his servant again the second time. That anybody you see, just call them to come to the marriage. 
He went out and few people that attended must wear their marriage garments. As the king was moving around in the hall, he noticed that a man was there without wedding garments. The king was not happy. He questioned him, friend, why are you here without your wedding garments? The man was speechless. He couldn't say anything because they, they, he had no reason for him not to wear his wedding garments. The, the, the king said to his servant, they should bind him and throw him out in the outer darkness. In our lesson story, Logan and his friend Seth were together on Saturday night. They were just discussing about the rapture. All of a sudden, he fell asleep. Logan found himself among thousands of the saints of God. He heard the sound of the trumpet. He was wondering. He was looking for his friend Seth. He was privileged to see his grandmother that died several years ago. She was among those people. Logan loved that place. Everywhere was so beautiful. He saw many people gathered together. They were singing beautiful songs of praise unto God and saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigned. He was looking here and there. Yes, before you know, he woke up. Oh, it was a dream. There are lots of difference between marriage here on earth and the marriage supper of the Lamb we are talking of. Here, the couple will only invite their friends and family members. But for the marriage supper of the Lamb, we are all invited. Here on earth, you don't need to be saved before you attend any marriage. But at the marriage supper of the Lamb, you have to be saved from your life of sin and have all your Christian experiences and remain faithful before you can be eligible to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, you, and guess what? This marriage is going to take place in the air. That is what the Bible told us. And guess what? Jesus himself is going to be the one that will be serving us. Oh, we are just, we can't do it. We are just praying that God should count us worthy to be among his saints. It's going to be glorious. You cannot compare it with anything on earth because Jesus himself is going to give us a reward for every good works we have done. Do you have your wedding garments? Our key statement is, I have my wedding garments. Our activities is the following is a parable about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Use the spaces to the left of each sentence to number them in the right order. Our lesson for next Sunday is chapter 7 titled The Antichrist and our memory verse is taken from Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. That is the end of our lesson. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity that you have given unto us. We thank you for the primary part lesson. We thank you for the answer lesson. Here we are, O Lord. We have heard. We want you to help us, O Lord, to be prepared for your second coming. We don't want to be left behind. Father, come and count us worthy 
come and make us good boys and girls so that at the end of our lives we'll be able to reign with you in heaven thank you for answering our prayers for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen thank you for coming god bless you see you next sunday Thank you boys and girls for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.